I'm going to present you some of my research today on, on car sharing and especially on uh, business models in car sharing. And um, my study is about uh, car sharing in Germany and well, characteristics of uh, b different business models on the market, of the success of different business models and yeah, what future prospects uh, might be. Um, and yeah, the research design, well I have a, a database basically of uh, all German car sharing providers or all that actually have an online presence or are open to, to everyone and not just a, a specific group. And um, I grouped these providers into four different business model types, um, which are these here. And I did this um, on the basis of my, my research or my, my database on these providers and just the, the general car sharing uh, literature that's already out there and um, who have um, yeah, basically identified these general four types of, of car sharing. Um, on the left, the, the cooperatives that are actually quite st still a, a large number of car sharing cooperatives in Germany. Then uh, we see business to consumer um, car sharing firms, so where the firm owns the, a fleet of cars and rents them out to, to consumers. And here um, we make a difference between the round trip type, so where you get your car at some specific parking spot and you have to return it to that same place and the one way of free, float, free, free floating kind where you can leave it anywhere in the designated city area of the provider. And then uh, we have the most recent version, the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing, where the operator or the, the company actually only offers the platform where private car owners can um, rent out their privately owned car to other consumers. All right, and um, to go on with my research design, so I collected data on the number of cars that each provider offers on the operating area, so the town or city or the number, uh, numerous towns or cities that they're offering in and then how many pe people live in, in these towns and cities. I also collected the founding year of, of uh, all the providers and then, like I said, the business that model dimensions and indicators. And here I basically I followed uh, pretty standard business model uh, dimensions of, well, the value proposition, the value network and the value capture. And I collected indicators such as the trip type, the membership span in a geographical sense, uh, or if they, the fleet variety, so if they offer one or more different um, types of, of cars. Then the value network is a very important uh, dimension of the business model, so what's the owner background? Um, is it actually a car sharing startup or is it, um, for example, a, an, an incumbent from a different industry stepping into the car sharing market? Um, and then from what kind of industry does that uh, provider come? For example, there's car manufacturers starting car sharing schemes or car rental firms, but also the railway provider. Then uh, the partner network is very interesting to look at. So yeah, are they, do they have a large network or not? Is that uh, more with the local um, partners or rather national or international partners? Is it, uh, it could be the uh, public transit is very often the case or also yeah, other kinds of, of partners. Then um, I also looked at the value capture, so the profit orientation, is it a for-profit or a uh, not-for-profit company? And just the basic fee structure um, that the organization has, so is there, uh, for example, a registration fee or a monthly fee or not? These kinds of things. Um, and yeah, this is my, my database. You see the four different types that I explained, we have cooperatives, business to consumer round trip providers, one way providers and the peer to peer providers. And uh, the, actually the largest group are the cooperatives, there are 51 car sharing cooperatives in Germany and they are also the oldest, uh, on average they're over 13 years old, which is in sharing economy standards pretty old I'd say. Um, and the oldest are more than 20 years old. 
Um, then the second type, the round trip um, providers, there's also 43 um, firms. <coughs> and they are also yeah, almost 11 years old on average. Then uh, the third type, the one-way um, operators, you find four firms in Germany that operate uh, solely in a one-way model. There are some firms who offer round trip and one-way modes, but then most of the time, or there's always the one-way is more of a test, um, and the main business is really the round trip. So we decided to to put them in the in the second type, um, and the. Oh yeah, the, the, they are rather more recent, the one-way type, than the round-trip uh, car-sharing type. Um, and the <laughs> earliest was Car2Go, who started their, their test in um, 2009. And the uh, peer-to-peer, yeah, like I said, it's the mo most recent uh, version of, of car-sharing. We ha see three providers in Germany at the moment. And um, yeah, let's look at the the cities that these providers serve. So the cooperatives really are basically only in, in serve one city or sometimes a region of like two or three towns. And also these towns are rather small of, with an average of 40,000 people. But this also ranges from really small villages of 2,000 people to a city like Munich. Um, then we have um, the type two, the round trip, uh, where we see that there are seven cities served on average with the me more medium-sized cities of 230,000 on average. And then the one way, well, you clearly see that they are serving um, the biggest cities. Yeah, there's a yeah. question, Ari? What's the difference between B2C car sharing and normal car rental? Um, this, well, um, they are in not just located in, for example, one location in some industry area or so where you have to go to and rent your car. And in a car rental, you rent mostly for at least one day. But the business to consumer car sharing, you can also rent for just an hour and yeah, rent it really close to your home. Um, I think that's the biggest differences, I'd say. I don't know, our definition expert oh, nods, no, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so one way in the biggest cities you see the average city size is 1.6 million or even more. And uh, yeah, only the biggest cities, so only yeah, in Germany, I think the biggest five cities are basically served. Um, peer to peer, I do not have data on the number of cities since uh, in the peer to peer case, every, every private car owner can, can put their cars on the website, no matter where in Germany they would live. So I, did, I, just, I uh, decided not to yeah, count any cities here. Um, let's look at what you could call success, or what we're calling success here, um, of these different car sharing business model types. And we see clearly um, yeah, that cooperatives are, of course, um, very small. They have. Uh, on average, 11 cars in their fleets. Then the business to consumer round trip uh, model, on average, 200 cars. But here you can you see a clear difference between the ones that operate in only one city, then they have like four, 45, and the ones that operate in a, on a national scale, then they have over 700 cars in their fleet. Um, the one way business models, of course, um, they profit from the density in the large cities that they uh, operate in. And so they, and the one way business model calls for a big fleet because you need a, a, a density in a city. So they have a, a larger amount of, of cars in their fleet. The peer to peer, um, well, you could say it's a zero, you have zero marginal costs to put your car on such a platform as a private owner. So you, you see, uh, great numbers of cars on the peer-to-peer -peer platforms. Mm. And when you look at the, the cars per people in the area that they serve, in the city that they are operating in, we see the largest number here for cooperatives 
you could so there's uh, 0.5 cars per thousand people in uh, the cooperative business model type, and uh, yeah, that you could say is a sign of the in inefficiency that they are having because they are not for profit, so that's uh, they don't have to worry to maximize their profits. So they can allow for an in inefficiency, you could say. The number of the peer-to-peer -peer, um, type, you have to interpret with care because, well, I divided it, uh, the, the number of cars by the whole population of Germany. So, um, yeah, of course, then it's a very low number here. And uh, I think what you can see from this, because you do see a significant difference between the average number of cars but not between the, the ratio that I calculated. I think that um, you can see that basically all of these business model types are viable in their specific geographical area that they're operating in. So the, the type one, the cooperatives, they occupy that small town niche because larger corporations, for-profit uh, operators, avoid going to these places. Um, due to a lack of yeah, scale economies and, and profit opportunities. The type two, the business to consumer round trip um, operators, they are typically in these more medium sized cities with uh, a quite sizable fleet and they're yeah, more professional and impersonal than the cooperatives which some people actually prefer to having this cooperative spirit. Um, type three, the one way is, yeah, like I said, they focus on the largest cities where the density of usage is high enough to secure the coverage that they need for their business model. And um, the peer-to-peer, -peer, you could say it's viable everywhere where car owners live um, because the car owners basically have zero marginal costs to put their car, to offer their car on the platform. Yeah, and um, these different business models are present, like I said, in different uh, in cities of different size, while they are equally viable in terms of coverage in, in these cities that they serve. And so I wanted to look at the dominant design or where are we going to go with, uh, with car sharing. And you can think of, is our, the business model going to converge or are we going to see a status quo like the, with these different types that we have right that we can identify right now and on the short term I think yeah we, we do see these types and they all have a viable reason to, to survive for right now um, you can also um, analyze the first mover advantage which we do see for the business models looked at separately for each of the business models. We do see a first move advantage, so there's a correlation between firm agent and fleet size. But this, is, uh, this advantage is absent for the industry as a whole. Because, like I said, the operators only benefit from the le local network externalities in their geographical market. On a more midterm um, thought, I think, uh, yeah, the peer-to-peer -peer is potentially the most disruptive. We've also seen a tremendous growth in the last couple of years here on peer-to-peer on -peer car sharing platforms. The prices are low, and especially with uh, yeah, technology, uh, technological advances, the convenience levels to use peer-to-peer -peer cars will rise. You can think of smart locks on the cars so that you have to get rid of having to meet and having to set a date to meet with the car owner at the uh, beginning, uh, at the end of each trip. Um, there's also interesting things going on with uh, an integration with private lease. So there are, there's uh, lease companies who are giving incentives to actually share the, the lease cars now. Um, what I want to say about cooperatives, because you could argue that they're, well, they're so small and uh, unimportant and um, they will be eaten up soon, for example, by peer-to-peer -peer if it becomes more convenient. Um, but you could say that uh, the members maybe remain loyal to their ideological and environmental principles that makes, it, makes these cooperatives uh, survive for such a long time. And you could add the, to this ideological reasons to use cooperatives the, the 
re, uh, the issue around data ownership. So you might rather car share with a cooperative where you know what um, mission they have than giving a lot of very sensitive data to an international corporation. So that might be a reason for co cooperatives to survive. And of course, on a longer term, you have to think about the diffusion of self-driving cars, because I think or I hope that it is very unlikely that they are privately owned in the future. And of course, you can say that commercially they are best exploited in a one-way business model. So you could argue that the one-way business model is going to become a dominant design in the long-term future. And uh, also because we talked about Uber today quite a lot already. Of course, this would then also become a substitute for taxi services and ride-hailing services. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, and uh, with that, I want to start a discussion, or I'm curious to hear your opinions. Thank you.